All right, let's solve the same problem, but change it up just a little bit. So um, I'm gonna call this version two of the bellows problem. And what I'm gonna do is solve it using a non-moving um, control volume this time. So that's different than the first time. Um, so recall that in this problem, I said that it's important to actually specify how the volume deforms. So let me, I'm gonna change the way that I define my control volume. And in this case, I'm gonna define a control volume that is non-moving, but is instantaneously located at the upper, um, basically like conforms to the upper portion of the moving boundary, but the control volume itself doesn't move. Um, and then similarly on the bottom side of our moving bellows, I will, create an instantaneously fixed control volume that's located right where the moving boundary um, is located. The, the, the control volume doesn't move, but like the black boundary is moving. Um, so, um, so let's write out the Reynolds transport equations in that case. So in that case, um, you would get that zero equals the rate of change of you know the mass inside of our control volume plus the um, rate of flux through the boundary of our control surface. Now note that in this case, our remember that integral is over the control volume. And in this case, our control volume does not move. Um, in that case, the first integral is zero, which is different than how we solved it the first time. And in this case, the relative velocity is just the velocity of the fluid, because again, our control surface is not moving. Um, and so um, basically in this case, we end up having to just evaluate the integrals. Oh, I wrote that as a control volume, but actually it's a control surface. I need to do an area integral over our control surface um, of rho times the V dot N dA. Um, note how in this case, the fluid velocity is not zero on the upper and lower portions of our control surface. Um, essentially the, the upper and lower portions of the bellows are pushing fluid across our, our control surface in this case because our control surface does not move with the boundary. Um, so let's evaluate what that surface integral is. Okay, so um, again, I'll, I'll write out the, um, the Reynolds transport integrals individually. So zero equals the integral of um, our upper control surface, um, which is rho times V dot N dA. But in this case, V dot N, um, so note that the unit normal is facing outward, but the um, fluid velocity, which moves with our wall, um, is moving downward. So V wall is, a is moving downward, but our outward facing unit normal is upward. Um, and so there's a minus sign that results from the V dot N term. As an aside, the wall itself has a velocity that is locally equal to minus the like R uh, theta dot, where R is the distance for, you know, basically like the radial distance from the right. There's an equivalent um, integral to be performed from the bottom surface. So that's the integral of rho times V dot N, um, which in this case, again, V dot N is minus V wall um, because V wall and um, the outward facing unit normal are in opposite directions. Um, and then that integrated over um, dA. So, um, and then the final integral to do um, would be the one where there's fluid passing out the exit. So we'll integrate over the exit rho times positive, um, or so it's V dot N, which is positive V exit um, times dA. Again, because the exit is in the same direction as the outward facing unit normal at the exit. Um, note that the two upper integrals are actually exactly the same integral, basically because they're just a mirror um, image of one another. So I actually only have to perform the integral once and then just multiply it by two. So um, if I look at what that integral is, um, I'm basically integrating the wall velocity, which is locally minus r theta dot, um, you know, inside that integral. So um, rho minus v wall times dA becomes rho times minus of minus r theta dot. And if you track all that out, the, the minus signs cancel. 
um, integrated over R from zero to L. So that gives uh, that gives a value of rho times B times L squared times theta dot. And then we add to that the value of the integral at the exit, which just turns out to be rho times V exit times um, A exit. Um, so just like the last problem, you can just simply invert that to find the exit at the velocity as, um, what is that? I guess it's B L squared theta dot divided by um, the area at the exit with a minus sign in front of all of that. And as expected, I mean, even though we solved the problem using a different control volume, um, we did ultimately find the exact same result when we were done.